Hello guys, welcome to Code Studio. This is our fifth session in end-to-end -end machine learning project playlist. Okay, where we will write to code to build the uh, UI page by writing some basic HTML. Okay, and also we will try to build a REST API for a single record prediction, so that you know the same REST API can be used to return the response to the UI page. Okay, in previous session we discussed how to build a flash project and write a python code to train the models and predict the results from a multiple batch sets okay you can check the previous session by clicking on the i button so basically uh, here is the additional expectation from the client okay they want a first that is a rest api to predict the results for a single record and second point is a ui page to be developed to predict the results from a screen okay Please note that in previous session we have uh, developed the REST API to predict the results uh, for a you know, uh, multiple prediction set. In this session we are going to develop a REST API to predict the results for a single record. Okay. Here is a sample UI page screen which we are going to develop for this uh, requirement. Okay. So let us jump into our project in uh, PyCharm. So basically this is our Flash project. Okay, where we have uh, developed so, so you know the. Code modules to or you know to, uh, train the model and predict the results from a multiple batch sets. Okay. So in this session we will uh, create a REST API to predict the results from a single record. Okay. For that here is the you know our main Flask application. So here I'll have to add the route. Okay. So these are the two uh, services which we, we have created in the uh, last session. Okay. This is for to train the model. That is the training service and this is you know the batch prediction service to predict the results from a multiple batch sets. Okay. Now I'll write one more piece of code to predict the results from a single record. So here is the you know the piece of code. So let me explain this. Okay. So this will be my service that is prediction. So once you uh, hit this service, so this will be the method will get invoked. Okay. So uh, at the beginning, uh, I'm getting the uh, the run ID and the uh, data paths for generating a log file. Okay and this piece of code we have added okay so whenever you so whenever you hit the service okay called the slash prediction okay in the in the method called the post then you know it will try to find the all the uh, the parameter values okay from the uh, request attributes like you know in our case uh, i'm trying to you know add these many parameters okay so based on these many parameters the system has to predict the results so like a satisfaction level last evaluation number of project average monthly uh, and the salary okay after getting all these parameter values okay i'm building a data frame on that okay also note that you know the columns i'm trying to take all the columns which are there in my you know the prediction or uh, the schema i underscore prediction uh, file okay all these co columns okay I'm taking and I'm building the data frame, okay. And uh, I'm uh, you know assigning the data types for each column, okay. And then finally, I'm calling the method called single predict from model, okay. So which will uh, be used to predict the results, okay. And it will return the response that will be stored in this variable, and that can be written through this you know or the code, okay. Using this uh, piece of code, it will re return the response with the uh, uh, you know actual uh, the predicted output. Now let us try to understand what are the methods are being uh, called uh, you know through this method, okay. So let me open this. So basically, this is the method of you know model called predict underscore model. Okay. So go through this. Okay. So basically, it is you know perform all the pre-processing activities. Okay, which we have done in the you know the prediction of batch set uh, case also. Okay. Then after it is trying to load the k-mean you know k-mean algorithm. Okay. From this uh, location. Okay. With it, which is used to you know find the cluster associated cluster for given data. Okay. Then once the once, uh, once the clusters are uh, derived, okay. So based on the clusters, the selective model, okay, will be uh, loaded, okay, out of these, okay, and then it will uh, predict and uh, store it under the variable called this, okay, and that will this variable will be written through this uh, method, okay. So go back. So that's all, guys, about you know uh, this uh, particular method of you know predicting the results for a single input entries, okay. So now let us try to you know test this uh, service. And see how it works. Okay. To test the service, we are going to use the uh, the tool called Postman. Okay. So let us open the uh, Postman. Okay. So here is my method should be a post method, and my service will be this. Okay. The prediction. Now what I have to do, I have to enter all these parameter values. Right. Okay. I'll enter the values like here. I'll give enter uh, the 0.38. Okay, 
So I entered all the you know the parameters and its values. Okay. Now once I click on the uh, send button, okay, uh, this uh, service will get invoked and it will return the output. So let us click on this. Okay. So it sent. Okay. Now you can see the response, right? The predicted output is one. Okay. So like this, you can test your you know this web service. Now let's try to develop a UI page. Okay. To create a UI page, basically we have to create a, you know the HTML files inside this uh, template folder. Okay, so I have already created a index.html file. Okay, and all the you know the web resources like you know CSS, images, and the JavaScripts we can be loaded in inside the static folder. Okay, so in this currently I do not have any file except my image file. Okay, so let us open this uh, you know index.html. I'm not going to explain much about this HTML thing. I'll only highlight the basic things. Okay, so uh, to develop this HTML, basically I have used the uh, you know, Bootstrap framework for a UI stuff. Okay, and the responsive to get the responsive, you know, or the responsiveness in the page. Okay, for that I have used some style sheets. Okay, and some JavaScripts as well. Okay, so these you can see like they here, and also, so this piece is for to you know, print the logo and the headings. Okay. And then after these are you know the form entries. Okay, we'll start from the from this block. Like for for individual row, okay, I'm creating a two two columns. Okay, uh, for in this example, so satisfaction level and you know the last evaluate evaluation. This will be on the same row with the two columns. Okay, so it's written. Okay, the similarly I have added the other attributes as well. Okay. And at the end, I have added the button called this. Okay, whenever user click on this uh, submit button, okay, it will try to you know uh, run the uh, run or hit the form action. Okay, so basically this ID will get submitted. So and the Ajax will be called. I mean, whenever you click on submit button, okay, this piece of you know the Java code will get triggered. Okay, so based on this ID, that is the form ID. Okay, submit action. This code to you know to prevent the, you know the uh, reload of this page. Okay, without you know re reload uh, paging, it will you know give the response. To your output okay we will see like, how, how it works uh, while submitting while testing the ui page okay then after here i'm getting all those you know uh, the item values or the text field values okay so here is the syntax to get these uh, you know the item values okay once i get all those i'm storing in a variables okay then after i'm now configuring my you know the rest api so this is my api for a single prediction okay the method is post right so and these are the the data elements nothing but our parameters for this particular service okay i am this this is my parameter this is my item variable okay so and finally i am you know uh, calling ajax okay to this uh, setting variable okay so based on its response okay what we are trying to do we are appending this html element called results okay with message called you know this is the alert ui with the response okay and this element is nothing but you know just at the you know here is at the uh, not this one here you can see right so this field will get replaced with the response value okay so let us try to you know test this uh, ua page with the values and see how it looks okay yeah before uh, testing this uh, first of all we have to create a, a route for this right so let us go to the main file okay so we do not have a not for that so so to display index page i am going to create a route okay so here is the uh, syntax for that so this is my comments uh, this will be the size so whenever you hit the uh, url called you know the local uh, local host uh, you know the colon uh, 5000 that is my port number for this application okay so automatically this uh, you know this uh, route will get invoked and this method will get triggered okay now to display the index okay this is the other command we have to use okay render template in bracket index.html okay now let me run this and hit this so now you can see right the screen is is displayed with all the required ui elements now we can run this page right so let me enter the values so these are some default values okay so let me run this okay so you can see the predicted output okay one so that's it guys uh, i hope you understood how to write a rest api to predict the, uh, the results from a single uh, entries and also you know how to develop a ui and get the results so now we are done with the project development okay now to monitor this you know the flask project okay we can use a, a service called uh, flask mo monitoring dashboard to you know monitor all our endpoints of this flask project okay Endpoints are nothing but the other routes or services, okay, of the Flask projects.
so now we will try to understand like you know how to uh, use those you know the flask uh, the monitoring services to use the flask monitoring dashboard first of all we have to import a library called flask monitoring dashboard okay once you import now go to the your main application okay now import this library okay import flask monitoring dashboard okay so once you import this library now you can you know uh, invoke the method called bind okay and in bracket you have to give a flask object that is your app okay now to see the uh, flask, uh, you know flask monitoring dashboard just run this application okay go to your browser and hit the following url okay so it's my local host then after the dashboard okay now you can see so the default arguments will be your admin admin just click on this login to see your endpoints okay endpoints and it's you know the request count today's uh, last seven days overall okay and also we have either the configuration page where you can make the changes as per your requirement and in and dashboard also we have you know the hourly api utilization these are the utilization reports and the api performance all these navigations or screens are there which you can you know uh, explore okay so in overview so whenever you uh, you know you let's suppose you hit the url okay of this so now the request uh, count gets increased it must get an increase okay so let me reload this now you can see right the index page got submitted so like this you can monitor you know your flask application okay so that's all guys for today's session okay if you like my video please click on like button and subscribe our channel thank you so much